Hello and welcome to episode one of the Lily Untangled podcast. I am Lily. I am from Oakland, California, and I love to knit. I love to plan my knitting and I love to be a part of the knitting community. So let's get to it. If you'd like to know a little bit more about me, um, I have an intro episode where I talk a little bit about my knitting journey and um, give you a little bit more background. And um, for today though, I, I did just want to go into a bit um, why I started a knitting podcast. Um, the first reason is the community. Um, I am so excited to be part of this growing, active, um, really beautiful uh, system of people who are interacting online around their knitting. Um, it's something that I was not aware of at all until about a year ago, and um, I've just felt so welcomed and so have so appreciated um, the beautiful inspiration really that I have gotten from others and I really wanted to be a part of that and to give back. Um, the other reason um, is maybe a little more complicated. Um, I feel like one of the things I love about knitting is that it's this way of kind of inserting ourselves into the world. Um, I think all making is about that. but. Knitting in particular, um, it comes with this sense of um, creation through through time and through the visual world, um, through texture and color, um, that's really an insertion of ourselves. And that is something that I want to get better at, um, not just in making my garments and having the courage to wear them, um, but also to um, Put myself out there more um, and is who I authentically am. Um, one of my favorite phrases is that um, the more you are your own true authentic self, the more you give other folks um, the freedom to be themselves and the inspiration to be themselves. And I've really felt that through other knitting podcasts that I've watched um, and I would love to be a part of that process. Um, and so this is a little scary and a little different, but I'm very excited about it. I will be linking all of the details for every little thing I talk about um, in the show notes. Um, I'm a former academic. I love a footnote. So I feel like this is really my, my time to shine um, in the footnote department. So um, there will be many of them. Um, and I hope that that's a place of discovery for you because it's absolutely been a place of discovery for me. So let's get started. What am I wearing? This is the Sarah Cardigan by um, Julie Weisberger. Um, Weis is that right? Yes, Weisberger. She is also from Oakland, which, you know, just have to, to rep our California knitting culture. Very strong. Um, and I love this sweater. Um, it is knit in half fisherman's rib. Um, it is top down. It is knit using Julie's Coco Knits sweater workshop method. Um, I do have the little book right here. You don't need that book or any actual um, uh, note pages or anything like that to do this sweater. This sweater, the pattern comes all together. I think it's brilliant. Um, the way that Julie constructs garments with this incredible yoke that fits like a hug, um, there is no slippage and the button band is integrated into the construction. Um, I think most versions of the sweater I've seen are knit in one color, um, but I just fell in love with the sea change fibers. Um, uh, this is Seacliff Worsted. Um, I made my first ever sweater, a color work sweater, um, in the Sea Change Fingerling. And I just think it's the most amazing yarn. I think that they have really nailed it. It's 100% um, uh, California Rambouillet wool. 
it has bounce, it has spring, it has saturation, the colors have such a depth, but also they're really vibrant with a kind of, they're, they're luminous, they really emit um, light in a, such a beautiful way. Um, the black is really nuanced, um, it has a lot of variation in it, but I didn't um, even know at the time that I should be worried about changing um, skeins as I knit it, and I don't, think I needed to worry I mean it's really there's really no sort of pooling um, you just get that sense of movement and variation there is however pilling which happened with my other 100% um, Rambouillet sweater as well and I don't care because um, it stopped and that is one thing that I found about these more rustic yarns especially here in the um, in the half fisherman's rib it is so squishy it is so soft it is so beautiful um i just love it and so i felt like it was absolutely the right thing to wear for my first podcasting episode uh the colors are um odile is the dark um sea hag so uh lovely if i could be a sea hag i would be this color of sea hag i think i would rule rule the waves with it um and then the darker teal is simone i had actually bought the darker teal because I thought it would go with the black and it just not enough contrast. I love a low contrast sometimes, which you will see soon, um, but that was just too low for me. But I got to include it in some little stripes on my cuffs and down below. Um, I did have a little whoopsie here with the, um, my bind off got a little stretched out there, but it's fine here. And um, my beautiful uh, buttons are from Shop Le Mecardi all of which will be in your footnotes if you care to peruse um, the citations as you will. Next, let's talk about what I just finished. So I'm gonna talk about three garments and <laughs> they are so different. I really don't think I could have put together three more um, eclectic <laughs> sweaters. They're, they are three full sweaters. They were all things that, uh, one was start to finish January, 2022. The other two were like almost done in December, but um, not quite. So first, let's talk about my shifty. It's such a, it's so great, it's so great. Okay, so shifty sweater, Andrew Mowry, spin cycle yarns, I, wanted to do after I had completed my first garment and then I did this and then I had cast on um, another cardigan and I thought oh, I'd really like to do something a little more swiftly and I just I'd never worked with spin cycle before haha <laughs> that will be funny soon um, but I went all in and I just went for it. I was very lucky in that um, I live very close. My local yarn store is actually a verb for keeping warm. Yes, it's true. It happened. I don't know how I lucked out, but I did. And they have an incredible custom colorway of spin cycle dyed in the wool um, that's called Small Wonder. And it's really magical. Um, one of my faves. And I just thought, let me, let's go for it. So I got all my dyed in the wool. I put together um, a combination that I thought would work. Um, this starts off actually with um, Mississippi Marsala, and then it goes into Royal Mile. Um, and then to, I did write it down, uh, Castaway. I did, I did I think two full skeins of Castaway and then ends in uh, more of the small wonder. So. I know there are a lot of notes um, on Ravelry and on Instagram about the fit of this and that some people um, have had issues with the yoke. I did not. Um, I wrote this exactly to pattern. I made a size two. I usually find that I have a very loose gauge and I end up going down a ne needle size, um, but I did not for this and I have not for other Andrew Mowry patterns. So. Um, I did find there was a little bit of puckering that blocked out really beautifully. Um, and yeah, I just love it. Ah, oh, pro tip. If you go um, 
pretty deep into the spin cycle vibes as I have recently. Um, what I think most people know this probably, but just in case you don't, in addition to all the colorways that are on their website and that you can see at different stockists, they do have a number of custom colorways, like the one that I mentioned for, for, for keeping warm, um, small wonder. And then I used a different one called Royal Mile, which is incredibly beautiful and really distinctive. Um, and that is the, the, um, custom color for fiber space um, yarn shop. And so I think now Spin Cycle has put the those up on their website and I would really, really encourage folks to check them out because they are very distinctive. Um, and they're usually, um, they take inspiration from the yarn stores themselves and from the yarn stores clientele and their own aesthetic and pair that together. Um, this is, so much fun to wear. Um, I kept it quite cropped. I wear it with high-waisted jeans. I wear it over dresses. Um, it's like a little bolt of sunshine and it really, it, it makes me feel great. Um, it's knit uh, mosaically, so you're knitting and purling. Um, and it just, it was really fast and fun. So um, that was my shifty. And <laughs> this, is, this is why I'm saying it's, it's a lot of very different things. Um, at the same time that I cast on my shifty, I also cast on something for my husband. So he had been seeing me make quite a few sweaters um, over the past few months. And so I wanted to knit him his own sweater. I gave him a few options and he chose the Watkins, which is by Whitney Hawkins, I believe. Um, and yes, Whitney Hayward, excuse me. And it's a um, Quince & Co. Uh, fibers pattern. It It's very, it's modeled exclusively um, on Ravelry and on the website um, as a woman's garment, but I think it's very, very much um, a non-gendered item. Um, it is <laughs> very strangely sized though i will say um i knit the smallest size for my um over six foot tall husband um and he loves it he loves it so much it is giant it is also not perfect um i had some issues with the shawl collar actually um i found the 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 raglan it's a bottom up raglan with this lovely color work panel in the back um, and again at the elbows um, and we've really I'm really glad actually I'm filming today because I'm sorry you're not getting a very good look at it but it's so it's a bit hard to hold that might be easier to see um, I'm filming today because he's out of the house so I could get it off of him um, it's a nap jacket folks it's literally a, it, it's like a magic soporific potion. Um, the first time he wore it before it was even blocked, um, he ended up falling asleep in it. So it is definitely a nap jacket. I don't know if anybody else ever um, gets served ads for nap dresses on Instagram. Um, somehow I fell into some algorithm where everyone thinks I need a dress to nap in, uh, but maybe you need a sweater to nap in. And if so, this is a nap sweater. Does anyone else have this nap sweater? It's not a robe, it's not a dressing gown, but it's cozy, it's comfy, it's warm. It's a nap sweater. And that is the Watkins. Again, um, I, it might have been my gauge, but I did go down a needle size that made it so giant. Um, but I think it's just a huge pattern. Um, and yeah, I would, I would absolutely say it was worth making. Um, and it is so soft and so cozy and a lovely piece, but the sizing is a little funky. And now onto my third um, FO or finished object. This is my first ever test knit for the beautiful and sprightly um, Teti Lodzak. 
Um, and this is her purpurea sweater. It is, it's really a, a piece of pride for me, I have to say. Um, I love it. It is extremely easy to wear. It is a all over cable top down sweater. Um, you can see the, um, I did stop the cables here, which is in pattern, but other testers did continue them um, all the way down. Um, the other modification that I, I, I asked Tati if it was okay if I did um, was I extended the back hem. You can see one of the best, most interesting, I think, details about the piece is this beautiful twisted split hem. So you kind of, you do a separate cable split here and it's so elegant. It really works beautifully, I think. Um, and I wanted to be able to have this piece go down a little longer so I could wear it with um, quite tight pants potentially. Um, I also rolled down the collar, um, which just fits me better. I feel like it, um, it sits better on my neck that way. Um, and I made this in Newtoden, um, which is a really beautiful, unique fiber. Um, made by uh, Honor Ocker, um, and uh, they have a Patreon that I am a part of, and it's a very beautiful community. Um, they're very passionate about this unspun yarn, um, and I feel like that, that passion really works its way um, into the fiber and then into your hands and, and into the garment itself. So that was a real, a real pleasure. Um, I knit it with two strands um, of Nutidin, and then I held it also with um, Magpie Fibers Feather Mohair, which I have some of right here. Just the best, so dreamy, um, a lovely sheen on it. I I was a little nervous about using the Nutidin because it does, um, it isn't spun, and so it's quite delicate. Um, this ball, I, or this cake, I, I, I did cake up um, separately, but usually I, because I was holding it double, I would just wind smaller um, hand wound balls. And um, I actually am not sure now that I needed the silk mohair, I think it gives the final garment a very beautiful, again, kind of silky sheen. Um, and what's shocking is this is so light. <laughs> I mean, honestly, a giant cable sweater like this, this should weigh a million pounds, um, but it doesn't. It's so nice. I just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay. So that's what I made. Um, now I guess I'll talk about what I'm making. So maybe too many things. I have four, four whips. And I will attempt to whip through them. So the first is another sweater. This is the Gold Wing by Jen. Steinbass, which has been all over. Um, it's just a really beautiful color work yoke. Um, and I was really excited to make it in these colors. Um, I am using, this is actually my first non, um, well, I guess not non-rustic, but I would say this is my first super wash yarn project. So it was very different. Um, I'm using hedgehog fibers, which are amazing, insane, beautiful. Um, the colors are petrol for the blue and clay. It, here, where are you little clay? Clay is my contrast color, though in the yoke it is fairly dominant so far. Um, and then I held um, a corresponding mohair above um, and then actually faded the mohair out, which I think is really nice. This is again a bit lower contrast. Um, which I quite like for this pattern. I think it's gonna be really fun and subtle. Um, I'm excited to get to the body and kind of extend out this blue and see how that goes. Um, it's just a really beautiful pattern. Um, and so far the yoke is fitting nicely. So that that is happening. Um, it's in my 
Starlight Knitting Society, one of my favorite Portland yarn shop stores. Uh, they have a nice little custom bag. I am also working on a, I realized that I didn't have any sweaters that were just one color. And I thought maybe I should have one. So I'm making a DRK everyday sweater from, by Andrea Mowry. And it's just, it's just a navy sweater, but I'm really excited about it. I'm making it in Kate Davies Designs uh, yarn, and it is just having some beautiful stitch definition, um, which the color here actually is called faded overalls. I do not find this faded. <laughs> it is very, very um, saturated, I would say, but it also has a really nice sheen to it. Um, it doesn't seem like it's kind of soaking in um, the light. It, it has a bit of radiance to it, um, and I'm really excited. Again, I think this is gonna be super wearable. Um, here's a photo. Um, this is it in a marl, which is quite lovely. But I think this is gonna go kind of with everything. And I just wanted to make something that I knew would be worn and just easy to pull on. Um, yeah, just kind of not, not, not a lot of work, not a lot of effort to wear. Um, what else do I have going on? Oh, my other Andrew Maori delight, um, which I'm very excited about because I'm making it with my mom. She's also making one. And we are going to wear our velvet mirror cowls together at the Portland um, Rose City Yarn Crawl. And I'm so excited to head up to Portland. They have such an incredible fiber arts community and the shops are always so welcoming and generous and full. Um, and I'm just really excited to go up there and be a part of it. So please, please comment below and, and um, let me know if you're going and maybe we can hang out. That would be super fun. If you have not seen the cowl, here it is. Um, it is knit in um, Ching Fibers Melted Surrey and some spin cycle. So it's a really fun kind of contrast both in the colors and the textures. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna snuggle up, show you what's going on there. If you can see it, it's really something else. Um, I have not worked with Surrey before and I really am digging it. Um, this is it all caked up. The color um, is whale. Mm. Very moody, very green, very blue, very me. Um, and it's just, it's its really different than a silk mohair. So it's not, um, it has that same kind of silk inner core, but there's a lot more going on in the um, kind of dimensions of the fluff, right? It's not just one texture or one um, consistency, which I really dig, because um, it has some merino in it as well, which is really cool. So I've been loving this project. Um, uh, the color work is very intuitive, not a lot of long floats. I think I'm catching floats just two or three times. Um, and it's just really, mm, it's very soft. I think it's gonna keep me nice and snuggly warm in the cold, rainy Pacific Northwest, which will be really so fun. I'm so excited. Up next, I have more spin cycle. I think 2022 is going to be my year of spin cycle. Um, if this was on your radar, I think it was on a lot of radars, um, this beautiful new design coming from Jessie Maid. Um, it is the Great Gingham Raglan. The sweater is coming. The test knitters, I think, have just finished or are finishing, and they are so beautiful. But luckily, Jessie came out with a little hat little preview. Isn't that just so sweet? I just love it. Um, and I was very excited because I knew I wanted to make the sweater and I've been playing around with my gauge a lot. Um, I learned how to knit um, English style. I switched to continental when I started doing more color work, um, which I love for being able to kind of pick up the different strands and to be able to catch floats really intuitively. Um, 
but it's really my, my gauge is very loose so I wanted a project where I could really play with that um, I had already kind of gone with the pairing that I wanted so this is the Camellia Fiber Company um, Merino Sport and this is in chicory um, oh, it's behind me here. Isn't it so pretty? I, ha I haven't caked it all up yet. And I paired it with Spin Cycles The Castle, which moves from the kind of blue, green, yellow into pinks. And some of these skeins have a lot more pink in them, which I think will be really beautiful to pair with the blue as well. Um, and you can see those gingham checks. They're just doing their thing. Uh, and there's a lot of kind of noise I would say in my stitches for this because I have been trying different yarn holds and different tensions um, I find hats to be so forgiving so I thought that this was a good place to kind of see what works um, and what works for me and then when I'm ready to do the sweater um, I can just kind of implement from there so it's just this is just the cutest thing. I, it makes me really, really happy. Um, it's also very addictive um, because the pattern is so intuitive and you can really read your knitting as you're going around. So I cast this on last night. Um, I'm not a super, super fast knitter by any means, um, but I do really love knitting and sport weight yarn. I think that it's a really nice um, it's a nice pace for me um, and like I said I was definitely playing with my tension and how I hold my yarn and I thought that this was a good project um, to experiment with because I want it to be right for the main garment and you know hat stretch it'll block out um, and I'm excited to keep seeing what the yarn does together so that's a that's been a really fun one I mean I've only been working on it for like 12 hours but it's been a very fun 12 hours with it I'm also I also have a half and half wrap um, on the needles which is just kind of my companion knitting um, it is in true turquoise from pearl soho in their linen quill and it's just a delight I oh I thought I was at the end of the row oh, apologies um, it's just a delight I think this has um, I just can't wait to kind of cozy up with it and uh, it's a if you aren't aware of the half and half wrap it is a giant shawl made from two two triangles of um, a garter stitch so it's really just it's just knitting um, and it's it's good for um, watching things with subtitles I find <laughs> uh, okay plans and acquisitions are next if you aren't into acquisitions, I get it. Um, some of this is really more things that I have had and I'm thinking of what to do with them next. Um, and then there are some real prizes that came in the mail. So um, here we go. The first is another Andrew Mallory pattern because apparently, and it has been cycle, I'm sorry, it's just, it's just where I am right now and that is the metamorphic which is out now it's the one that she's wearing here in the cowl um, and it's just reverse stockinette stripes back and forth with uh, spin cycles dyed in the wool again and spin cycles DK uh, metamorphic yarn which I happened to have this is their gray. It's very, very squishy soft. So this is made from the recycled fiber ends um, from the Spin Cycle Mill, um, put together with um, uh, fresh merino wool, and then spun and put together for us. Uh, it's very soft, it's very squishy. It has a really nice twist to it. Um, just like the twist on a spin cycle. So my thought for the metamorphic was that I was going to use this and then I made a really fun spin cycle Franken ball. <laughs> so I took, I had lots of scraps from my shifty um, and I had a few things that I had been playing with and swatched with and just weren't working out. Um, so I attached them all together into this really wonderful minty, pinky, 
ball of goodness. I hope that's coming out. Ah, oh, so much fun. It was really fun to put together too, I have to say. It was a really nice way to spend some time um, color fading into deliciousness. Um, and I just spit spliced everything, so. Um, yeah, it was really nice. So I thought I was gonna pair these two together, but then I swatched, there's a cake of this somewhere else, and there just wasn't enough definition. So I did, Spin Cycle did have a huge um, update of their metamorphic base, and I got um, a highly contrasted marl. So I'm hoping to swatch with that and see what happens. So that is to come, plan number one. Um, I also, when I was getting the Qing Fiber um, Whale, which again, mm, love it, so great. Um, I think they call this Melted Baby Alpaca, which kind of sounds like maybe not great for the baby alpaca. Um, melted Baby Surrey, okay, Melted Baby Surrey. But it does, there's a sense of real, um, uh, not viscous, but there's it, it does feel liquid. It does feel like the softness kind of tra is transformative. It's kind of shape shift, shape shifty. It's beautiful. So when I got the whale color for my um, velvet mirror cowl, I also saw they had this super punchy. <gasps> look at that, Yee, electric blue. So I got a couple of these, and I have. This Camilla Vad Lanswall, which is this super dark, 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 dark navy. So unlike, I would say, the navy that I'm using, the Kate Davies designs, um, uh, lamp, that's also Lanswall, um, where that had it's a real sheen, a real sense of light kind of emanating from it. This is a, this is really kind of soaking everything up, right? It's, it's really absorbed absorbing um, what's around it so I thought these would look really interesting together but I don't know what I don't know what I'll do um, so that might happen another thing that might happen is more custom spin cycle this is from Pearl 2 Walla Walla um, I forget the name of it, but it's really something. It's so pink, so pink and cranberry. And I'm not really a pink cranberry person, but I might be turning into a pink cranberry person. And when I was looking for my Pearl Soho um, uh, lin uh, linen quill, I came across to this flax down, which is really beautiful. Um, and this is alpaca with merino and linen together. And wouldn't that just be so fun to do color work in this and then the body of a sweater in this? Maybe, potentially? I don't know, I'm thinking on it. I might need a break from the spin cycle, but I probably won't because I just really love it. It's just like, it's magic. And then my kind of major acquisition for the month um, was from The Wandering Flock. Um, she sells on Etsy, incredible colorist, just stunning. Um, and I was able to order um, last month from her and I decided I wanted to do a fade. So I hope you can see this, one of my little yarn baskets. I kind of lined them up for us. Isn't that so fun? I just think it's so great. Love it. Um, and this is very, I think, very special yarn. Um, in addition to the colors, it's 100% um, superwash extra fine merino. It's so soft. It has, a, it has its own kind of haze. I wouldn't call it a halo, but maybe it's a haze. And it's just really, um, it's, it feels really special. Um, it feels very, very special, and I'm really excited to work with it. Um, I do have a few other colors that go with here. Um, and I also have in stash quite a bit of mohair. So I had this idea <laughs> that um, Espace Tricot recently published a kind of sweatshirt style top-down sweater 
that I think is really groovy and I'm thinking it could be a very fun fade. So that's, that's what I'm playing with for this. I think that could be really fun um, with those maybe held with mohair, maybe not. I've got some swatching to do. I want to check it out first. Um, and oh, I, I know what I want to talk about. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about Untangled, the app. Um, it is a um, organizational tool for knitters. Um, it is not a social media site. It is really a kind of playground for creativity and a space to keep things. Um, I was finding myself really frustrated that my um, patterns, um, my PDFs and my patterns were on my phone but in different places than my notes about the pattern I was working on um, and that was in a different place than my stitch counters and round counters for different projects so um, I uh, am I think I mentioned at the top I'm a, a curator in my professional life and I've worked with um, lots of different project management systems um, and I put together something that really works for me and I'm hoping works for other people too so I will include a link to the waiting list for that if it's something that you're interested in. Um, I think at the end of episodes, I'll also give little maybe status updates about how the app is doing or where we are in different places with it. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely an adventure. Um, I feel like I kind of stumbled into this part of um, my work and my world, but it's really exciting too. and. I don't know, I'm not sure exactly how to end this conversation, but um, I spoke in the introduction and, and, and at the beginning about kind of inserting ourselves into the world and maybe I would just um, offer the invitation. Um, if no one's asked you to put yourself out there or to be yourself, um, let this be uh, a chance and an opportunity, um, please. Um, be exactly who you are and give others the space and freedom to to be themselves and um, put yourself out there and maybe that's just in your stitches um, or maybe that's um, making a phone call or putting on a knitting podcast for the first time so thank you if you made it this far um, I'm sorry if I spoke too fast I am very nervous <laughs> um, but I'm also really happy to be here. So thank you all and see you next time. Bye.